Good afternoon. Weak, 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 weak signal. Good afternoon. Amen. Good afternoon. Amen. All right. That's a strange one. I thought you'd say good afternoon. All right. For this session, we want to look briefly. How do you convert the jungles of public campus into outreach hubs, principles, strategies, When we talk about this, they were not only pious, they were not only holy, they were not only memorizing scripture, they were not only translating scripture, they were also strategists in developing modules to make them effective evangelists. So, because of time, I'm going to dive straight into this. Hear me. I started last time by telling you the university is the clear-cut fulcrum with which you, to move the world. More potently than any other means, change the university and you will change the world. I'm basing this on an assumption. The church, as the body of Christ, has the same purpose as Christ's. The concern of Christ must be the concern of his church. What was the concern of Christ? For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. In essence, every church must have the same philosophy. John 3.17 for the son into the world to condemn not the world but that the world through him might be saved I repeat the church as the body of Christ has the same purpose as Christ the concern of Christ must be the concern of his church in other words the church must be willing to die to save souls and then why put it this way? The church is God's appointed agency for the salvation of man. It was organized for service. It was organized for service. And its mission is to carry the gospel to the world. I repeat, the mission of church must be the mission of Christ. God called Abraham he said I will bless you and you will be a blessing and by you all the families of the earth will be blessed the very life hear me I'm quoting desire of ages the very life of the church depends upon her faithfulness in fulfilling the Lord's commission any fellowship that is doing entertainment or music, every activity on the university campus, our goal must be how do we leverage it for mission? God could have reached his object in saving sinners without our aid. But in order for us to develop a character like Christ's, we must share in his work. In other words, if you want to see the joy of redeemed souls, just engage in the work of soul saving. Strength to resist evil is best gained by aggressive service. How do I overcome masturbation? How do I overcome fornication? How do I overcome vices? Strength to resist evil is best gained by what? Aggressive service. In light of this, I want to share some practical principles. I gave some hint the previous sessions. Uh, for the sake of time, I will run through it 
briefly, then we tie the loose ends. Let me share with you some data from the church. Any church with a lot of pastors will not grow. If you check the church, the church's data, check the church growth ratio, 1988, Europe, Japan, North America, one pastor to 169 church members, the church growth is 1.2%. In South is to one pastor, 628 church members, the growth rate is 8.92%. East Africa, South or South Mexican and South Philippine Union, one pastor. The growth of the The reason is simple. How does this work? The way it works is simple. When pastors are in charge, and pastors do everything. Church members begin to slide and grow down. Watch your screen. This is a typical four-year campus ministries module. You begin in the first year, the introduction stage. You go to the growth stage, second year. You come to the maturity stage. And then you get to the decline stage. The people are living and they are going back. Jesus says, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Doing outreach on university campus is very difficult. Doing outreach for those who are educated and in the city centers. Very Manuscript 62, 1901. A great work is to be done. I am moved by the Spirit of God to say, to those who engage in the Lord's work, that the favorable time for our message carried to the cities has passed by, and this work has not been done. I feel a heavy burden that we shall now receive the time. Many universities are in the cities, true or false? Come on, talk to me. Many universities are in the cities, true or false? How do you begin a campus ministry's strategy? Let's bow our heads and let's whisper a prayer. Kindly bow our heads, close your eyes. Just whisper one minute prayer and tell the Lord, give me understanding. Can you pray? Tell the Lord, give me understanding. The sister in the black scarf, just pray. Lord, give me understanding. Father, give us an insight in this next 30 minutes. In Jesus' name, amen. Any group, and I'm speaking not just from data, also from experience. Any time you want to convert a university to become a, a soul winning center, the first job be you must convert and revive a small group. You need a working group to work with. So the first thing, convert and revive a nucleus group. Ellen why talk about, I shared it the last time, those after becoming established, rooted, and grounded in the truth should enter th these institutions of learning as children. The world didn't say they were established, they were rooted, they were grounded. Then later, they were sent to the universities. To become missionaries. So if anybody desire. That I want to do. Ministry missions. On university campus. You need a small group. That are established. That are rooted. That are grounded in the truth. As a nucleus base. And then the next one is. They must be converted. Letters 29, 19, uh, 18, 91. Ellen White says. They must be converted. So the four pillars on which to begin evangelism on a university campus is you need a group
that is established. You need a group that is rooted. You need a group that is grounded in the truth. You need a group that is converted. Without this, you are going to fail. Messages to young people. Preachers or laymen advanced in years cannot have one half the influence upon the young that the youth devoted to God can have upon their associate. You can do a work that those who minister in word and doctrine cannot do. You can reach a class whom the minister cannot affect. Cannot the conference presidents open the way for the students to engage in this line of labor again and again it has been presented to me that there should be companies organized and educated thoroughly to work as nurses as evangelists as gospel students to perfect a character after the divine similitude so Ellen White is saying the work a student can do no pastor can do it on the university. So the first step is, let us get students converted, established, grounded. Then from there, we have a working machine to work with. If that is clear, somebody say an amen. I did not hear you. Somebody say an amen. Get a working machinery, a nucleus, a group of people. Number two, Strategies to reach the universities. Effective discipling strategy. After you've gotten that group, how do you strategize to effectively disciple the school? I'm quoting from the book Heralds, 1888. One worker who has been trained and educated for the work, who is controlled by the, Holy, by the Spirit of Christ, will accomplish far more than 10 laborers who go out deficient in knowledge and weak in faith. Can we read it together? Let's go. Do you understand? Do you understand? So if one person will go through the trainings being done, unlike 10 people who are ignorant and stupid, who will accomplish more? One person. I am not saying it. I'm making the point. There must be effective discipling strategy. So we don't just begin a campus ministries program just because rah, 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 we have energy. You waste money. Thinking must go in. One who works in harmony with the counsels of God and in unity with the brethren will be more efficient to do good than ten will be who do not realize the necessity of depending upon God and of acting in harmony with the general plan of the work. In other words, if you work in counsel with God's spirit, Ellen White says much will be accomplished on the campuses. The minister should not feel that it is his duty to do all the talking and all the laboring and all the praying, he should educate helpers in every church. This is why I repeat, any university campus ministries where the pastor is always giving directive, I have a presentation title, from a ministry to student, to a ministry of students. Ministering to students is you babysit them. They don't know anything. You are teaching them. Ministry of students is they have ownership. The greatest help we can give the fellowship or what do you call it? Uh, University of Zimbabwe. Is it fellowship you call it or church? It's a church? Association. The greatest help that can be given the fellowship. Let the minister devote more of his time to educating than to preaching. Let him teach the people how to give to others the knowledge they have received. This is the reason why we are having this session. So the greatest help that we can give uh, our people is teach them to work for God 
and to depend on him, not on the ministers. So you must be empowered so that you can. In fact, in the fellowship, there should not be too many sermons. Let the minister devote more of his time to educating than to preaching. The people have had too much sermonizing. But have they been taught how to labor for those whom Christ died? So question. More sermons or more teaching and training? Which must we do in our churches and in the universities? More preaching? More preaching? Answer me. Yeah. More preaching? Yes or no? No. Can we do more? Yes. To everyone, work has been allotted. And no one can be a substitute for another. Can I do the work God has given you to do? Yes or no? No. You have been given. I am doing mine. Teach, educate, train, empower. With such an army, you know this. The Lord has appointed the youth to be his helping hand. So, it was in this regard I brought you the statistics. The lesser the pastors are in the churches, the higher the church will grow. Principle number three. <coughs> Sorry. The world dances module. The world dances model. Look at it. They entered the schools of the world as students. They had no pretensions. Apparently, they paid no attention to anyone. But they lived out what they believe. They never sacrificed principle. I shared this the last time. And then all of a sudden, their sacrifice, it became known. So we said, the world dances principle is, your fellowship must be authentic. It must be focused. It must uphold faith. It must be uncompromising. It must be contagious. It must be different. It must be outstanding. It must lead to introspection. People come to your fellowship and your services is just like a village in northern Ghana or eastern part of Ghana or central Zimbabwe. You are not organized. No deliberateness. No strategy. Hear me. Let me pull myself up. You cannot be university student and before the service, you do not plan how the service is going to run. In other words, what ambience do you want to generate in the room? The preacher is coming to preach. No fellowship should just stand up. We are calling this pastor. He should come and preach to us every month. There should be a goal. This month, our focus is on stewardship. Next month, our focus is on human empowerment. Another month, we want to focus on excellence. So when you are inviting the pastors, tell them, this is our goal. I cannot pastor a church. And after one year, there are no key indicators of where my church members must be. So when you are intentional, when you are deliberate, the non-Adventists who come to your fellowship, they will notice. It is contagious. Your music is intentional. People come to your fellowship and it's sluggish, lazy. One of just the means, not organized. Somebody is speaking, somebody will come and speak in your ears. Then another person, no, that is a village staff. Unacceptable in a university. Thinking must go in. Listen, in your fellowship, Anybody who stands to sing is not there to practice. Practice in your room. When you stand up and you pick the mic, you are ministering. You must plan. You must rehearse before you come. Don't tolerate mediocrity. The world didn't just were intentional. They were unique. They were outstanding. When you go to their fellowship, you begin to think... They were true to their principles. We talk about this. It was prayer driven. Listen. Sometimes you go to Adventist churches and you wonder. 
It's like demons like to sometimes visit us. There is no fire, no power. We are not talking about speaking in an intelligible, charismatic, ecstatic tongue. There should be there should be energy, deliberateness. You want to lead music into prayer. And then you are singing, holy, holy day. Cannot be like that. The music for, this, for prayer must be deliberate. They must be well chosen. It must be intentional. Your fellowship cannot be, be countercultural. Somebody should come and see what you are doing on your campus. It must be classy. It must be attractive. Don't go back to your fellowship. The reason we can attract intelligent, brilliant, serious student is that we are just substandard. Not the world dances. They were deliberate and intentional. I, 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 for the sake of time, fill in the blanks. Yesterday I talked about this. Use the early church module. I call it the PPH model. The private, public, and hostel module. What do I mean? Let me take you through quickly. Look at this text. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. They witness to me in Jerusalem. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. They receive his word. They were baptized. Acts chapter 3 verse 11. Preaching in Solomon's uh, uh, courtyard. Acts chapter 4 verse 33. They witness. So there were public evangelisms in the book of Acts. Then there were Personal evangelism. Peter and John with the lame man. At eight, Simon the sorcerer. At eight, Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. At chapter nine, Ananias and Saul. At chapter ten, Cornelius. These are personal evangelism. At chapter eleven, Barnabas and Saul. At sixteen, Lydia, the Philippian jailer. At chapter seven, Jason. At chapter eighteen, Priscilla and Aquila and Apollos. So there is evangelism. There is a personal evangelism and I call it the home base evangelism which is the hostel breaking bread from house to house so what I am attempting to say is one of the things we need to see in a university church that shows that they know what they are doing they don't use just one method public campaign they use personal outreach they use home based evangelism visit in the hostel i'm going to give you a, a simple mission report when i was the campus ministry director in my union what we deployed and the outcome we had ladies and gentlemen let's be intentional so you have it this way in public evangelism there is a preaching and i'm telling i'm speaking to munya we will experiment it in the University of Zimbabwe. You will see the work, the fruit, the power. They will have house to house. We call it the care group style. Then the personal evangelism is more or less Bible studies. I do not have time. When the New Testament church used this module, at 1 verse 10, 120 people were added. At 2 verse 41, 3,000 new converts. It moved to 5,000. They moved to more and more. They moved to increasing. The number grew. And then there was a church planting. And then they say many thousands received the word. From 120, using this basic module we are talking about, public campaigns or public outreach, personal campaigns, hostel-based evangelism, when they use it, it was massive. I do not have the time to do this. Good. Let's go. It is safe to say, since this was the mode of outreach among the disciples, Paul's campus ministry's work is likely to take the same approach. Remember, in Acts 19, the Bible says, And he went to the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. Look at verse 9. But when some were hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude, talking about Paul, he departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. He left the city center because people were opposing the gospel. Paul went to the campus and begin to deploy campus evangelism. And after a few months, the Bible says, two years, 
when he was in Asia, every human being heard the word of God. I want to hear an amen. Two years. Paul focused on university students. Developed them. What we are talking about. Immediately, there was what we call exponential growth. Evangelism plus campus ministries will give the explosion. Everyone in Harare is able, in Zimbabwe, is able to hear the word of God. Why? There was a strategy deployed. Another thing that we need to do, aside our traditional model, is campus community impact and relevance. You need to meet the needs of the university community. As yes, we are always interested in baptizing, but we are not interested in investing on the university campus. Watch around your campus. I, Christ method alone. We need to find out, profile your campus. We must fix the needs they have as much as we can. So you go, when I was the campus ministry director, the University of Ghana, they quickly came up with a new vice chancellor. So I told my team, let's get the vice chancellor's strategic document. We studied it. We noticed the vice chancellor says, I want a green university. So we quickly wrote a letter to Adra that Adra should give us 10,000 trees in line with the university vice chancellor's vision. The Seventh-day Adventist students want to support the university vice chancellor's vision of greening the community. We wrote a letter to him. He said he was busy. He could not attend. Sunday, we used five hours. When we started planting, before the second hour, the vice chancellor came to spend six hours with the university student. Then what that led to, it gave us a... who are to write Sabbath exams. On the campus, evangelism is not only getting the people baptized. So your campus is very dirty. You see that they throw rubbishes around. In light with our health reform, let your group make plans, leverage, raise funds, and buy 150 big dust beans and donate. And when you are going to donate, let the cameras be there. Let them take video footages. Let the media pick note. Let them make a Seventh-day Adventist student are championing a clean Zimbabwe. This is the way you become relevant. It's not every time you talk about Ellen White and this, your, I don't want to hear. Think. So it is not every time. It's us against them. Us against them. It's stupidity. You need to think and see, how do we improve University of Zimbabwe? How do we improve, is it heat? Harare Institute of Technology or something? How do we improve it? What are the needs? I'm saying what I call profiling and understanding the campus pulse. What is the need? Of, and the same apply. When you leave the university, you go to your local church. This Wednesday prayer meeting and Bible study business every day. Think and ask my city, what is the need of the city? Get to the city mayor. They made me a district pastor in one municipal. When I arrive, two weeks, I book an appointment with the, with, 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 the, with the city mayor. I went there, neatly dressed, decent, smelling good, using correct car. When I came out with my team, we went there, we finished talking to him. I review his strategies, his plan, and where we can fit, we can partner. We are partners in developing the city. I set out a five thematic areas we'll focus on. And we want to tell him that we are behind him. If demons want to pull him down, we are praying for him. After I told him to kneel down, then the mayor knelt down. And I laid my hand on him. And I prayed for him for 10 minutes. Every time we invite him for program, he is coming. I'm a spiritual leader in his territory. You need you, Adventists, we sometimes behave as if, listen, in your country, you are one million plus. If you go to Ghana, we are 33 million. Adventists are only 500,000. I was telling the union leaders, take advantage of it. Open some strategic doors. So you, the university student, think for the church. Be active. It's not always... You, you, as yes, they will do this thing like this and put this thing here. Then with a, a village PA system, then the, the PA system is sounding... It's because we are going to preach Sabbath. The demons are affecting us. Are you the only one preaching? 
you have a poor PA system, you are talking about demons. Even Satan is asleep when we are doing our crusades. He's asleep, he's snoring. Think. Tell somebody, think. No, no, come on, tell somebody, think. Watch. Hey, man. Community cleanup exercises. When I ask, I just mess- to think, they started thinking themselves. One of the no university dirty when Adventists are around. If for nothing, they should ask. If the campus is dirty, the country should get to know. Do we have Adventist students here? This is a, a, what we call a bait for your health reform. But as for our health reform, it's about charcoal. It's about clay. It's about all these things. But we live in dirty environments. We are completely useless to the community. Somebody told me this. And I believe, I believe him so much. He's a credible source. He said when Desmond Tutu and Tabo Mbeki was president, the Seventh-day Adventist Church invited Tabo Mbeki, the president of South Africa, for a function. Finish. This was six years ago, seven years ago. The general conference picked it up. I said the general conference picked it up. This is the vice chancellor of the University of Ghana. He was there. So he fell sick. He was the first vice chancellor to enter Seventh Day Adventist Church because we use this strategy. When he was sick, he called us, Pastor Mensa, bring the tea. I'm dying. Come and pray for me. Pray for me. You can cut that one out before he come and arrest me. Do you understand what I'm saying? So think. One of our, one of the, our schools, the lecturers were very harsh. So the students prayed and prayed and prayed. So they came to me, they were discouraged. They said, Pastor Mensa, I said, think. It's not only about prayer. Think. Who is the lecturer? We check the lecturer. Is the wife with him? Are the children around? We notice the wife is in UK. Blah, 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 blah. His house will be dirty. So I told them. Every month, twice, go and clean his house. Start cleaning it six months before his exams. So every month, our students will go. They'll go and clean the house. They'll do the hedges. They'll clean the place. They'll wash the car. Don't take money. Don't take food. Go. Oh, come and take something for water. Thank you, sir. Come and take a thank you, sir. Come. Six months later, he placed the exam on Saturday. So I told him, now go and ask him for favor. They went. He gave them concession. For the rest of his life, he got some respect for Seventh-day Adventists. Point number six. We, this we dealt with it throughout the week. Leave and uphold the faith. Leave what we practice. I don't need to say it much more. I, I've said it. All the sermons talk about it. Just leave what we stand for. Leave it. I, I, I will skip all this one. Just leave what we stand for. Leave it. Leave it. This is my next, my next headache. This is my next headache on the university campus. A life of excellence. I repeat, I am so impressed with this setup and the quality of coverage. Two years ago, I was at your conference. <laughs> my heart and they were given every justifiable excuse. But you see, hear me. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in the whole kingdom. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps. It's not just when he was in school. The guy in business also excelled. Hear me. Everything you need to do, you must do it excellently well. Creation was done excellently. Watch very carefully. When God created day one, when he finished, he analyzed day one. What did God say? Behold, it was what? 
Day number two, what did God say? It was good. In fact, if you will go on, every single day, God analyzed all that he did. He said it was good. Everything was good. Day number six, it was very good. So the statement is, creation was an intentional design of excellence. Are you a product of creation, yes or no? No, hear me. Are you a product of creation, yes or no? Redemption was also an act of excellence. When man sinned, if you read Malachi, where are you? God gave orders what you can use for sacrifice. Here is my beef. I may even end it here. Malachi 1 verse 8. Don't forget this text till you die. When you offer blind animals for sacrifice, is, it that, not, is that not wrong? When you sacrifice lame and diseased animal, is that not wrong? Try offering them to your governor. Will he be pleased with you? Will he accept you? Says the Lord Almighty. Deuteronomy chapter 15 verse 21. It says, what must you use for sacrifice? And if it has any blemish, lame or blind, any ill blemish, whatever, Thou shalt not sacrifice it unto Jehovah thy God. Leviticus 22 verse 25. It says, among others, and I read. And you must not, not accept such animals from the hand of a foreigner and offer them as the food of your God. They will not be accepted on your behalf because they are deformed and they have defects. In other words, anything we want to offer to God as a sacrifice, it must be excellent. Ellen White says, in the cities of today, where there is so much to attract and please, the people can be interested by no ordinary effort. Ministers of God's appointment will find it necessary to put forth extraordinary effort in order to arrest the attention of the multitude. Ellen White spoke about excellence to the point, he says, pastors, don't go and preach your two by four sermons. The sermon must be top class. The services must be top class. If I have time, I will tell you. Look, all this, I blasted my student. I told them, you people are cheap. They bring graphic design and it is anyhow. You dare not. Even if you are in the village, there is a secretariat called Quality Assurance. We will vet your posters. This was designed by medical students. They were not graphic designers. The pressure was on. The pressure was on. Medical student. Then, every vacation, they take their buses. They are going to the village to do crusade. I canceled it. I said, you are stupid. Your grandmother cannot win the universities. They are winning the village. You are also going to the village. If your gospel is authentic, if it is intellectually stimulating, debate Adventism on the university campus and let them join the church. There is economic benefit if university students join the church. Our church is struggling with money. We, we don't want liabilities anymore. We want people who work and we get money. We are tired. One church building, except one rich man comes to pump in money. We are there hoping, may God bless. Listen. I told them, village evangelism is done. They were going to be doing like what you are doing here. In some village rooms, I said, that is over. Here we go. This must be the standard. And every campus, the pressure was piling. The pressure was piling. We, God will take nothing. That is mediocre. Hear me. There should be, where are you? A compelling harmony between God, the master, two, the message, three, the messenger, four, the multitude, the masses, five, the method, and then the means. Campus ministries calls for money. It must be intentional. It must be deliberate. I don't have time to deal with the health reform implication. Ladies and gentlemen, my point today is simple. You have just few years to do this. Four years. Think out of the box. Think outside the box. And maybe in the evening, I will deal with the other versions of it. 
enough of the mediocrity. Enough of the mediocrity. In case people think I'm just speaking because I am talking, Ellen White says, as I wrap up, present the gospel in its simplicity. Follow Christ's example, and you have the reward of seeing your student won to him. Even the great men are more easily drawn by the simplicity. Simplicity is not mediocrity. To have something simple is really excellence and it's not cheap. Use this method and this means to get it done. Must we reach the poor people first? No. She says, what you need is a living experience. She says, the church, it be bound, is looking for better methods. God is looking for better men with ideas, with concepts that will think out of the box. Go back to your fellowships. Let your Sabbath services change. It's better to have two good services than to have five weekly routine services that are achieving nothing. Let me say it again. It's better to have two good, well-thought, strategized, active, well-greased programs a week than to have five that nothing can be written home of it. So let me ask you today. Do we have changes to make in our fellowship? Yes or no? I did not hear it well. Do we have changes to make in our fellowships? Yes or no? Do we need to begin to think differently in our fellowship? Yes or no? I have five minutes to go. Question. I can take two or three. Question. Question. Please, let's hear you, Your Majesty. Please, if you have a question, please walk and come quickly. We'll take maybe one or two so that the next session can begin in earnest. Yes. So, I do appreciate your message. Uh, my question is, we as students and alumni, we have heard your plea for us to be self-reliant, innovative, um, is, it, is there a possible strategy we can use so that we can also teach our mentors, our elders? Because we take advice even from other elders. We cannot just wake up and start doing things without getting um, an approval from our elders. Is there a method, a strategy we can use that's not very offensive, uh, something that's good to actually tell them, no, students don't need just the word. They need money, they need everything. They need to be told we as Adventists are useful. All right. Thank you. Any other question? We'll answer our own. Okay, let's hear you. Last one. I like the way you are dressed. Um, all right, my question is, um, you did say that we shouldn't have... My question is, you said we shouldn't, we should, it's better to have two services that are productive than to have five that achieve nothing. Yes. And as youths, we do understand that there are some things that children out there that are not in the church do enjoy doing. Activities like, it could be color runs, mud runs, and things like that. So is it advisable for us to incorporate some activities that aren't really written in doctrine or in the word, just so that most people our age group can engage in our activities as well? Thank you. I'll begin from her own. Why did I say she's addressing is nice? You are laughing. If, you must be classy as Seventh day Adventist. Dress well, smell well. <laughs> now I have given up on you people. <laughs> Hear me. <laughs> there are some activities in that may be youthful. You see, campus ministry is not a social club. It's a spiritual agenda. So, you need to first ask, what is the threshold of spiritual content and then social content? Are you getting it? If you're not careful, you reduce it to anything that attracts people. What attracts people is the word. What attracts people is the Bible. 
What attracts people is Jesus. What attracts people is value to their lives. So you need to package the spiritual agenda so that it can fit with their needs. We can have some social events. For example, every Sunday, you can decide that you are going to have every Sunday an effective, wise, intelligent, socially stimulating physical project that the university is attracted to. You package it well, your publicity is decent, you know, think about it. But don't reduce it to a social club where we are doing it to be customer sensitive. Now, concerning the question, how can we get the message to the elders? I don't know how the structures work here. But one way is I believe the campus ministry passed, the pastors in charge of the unions and the conferences. They know these things. So, remind them. Remind the elders. Look at the quotes we use from the spirit of prophecy. Deploy them. Go and praise God, we have a good media. They post it, pick it up, and share with the elders that this presentation happened and you want his thoughts on it. Then that is the way you engage it. In places, they will chop the videos and what we call the punch lines will begin to go viral. That is the way you draw attention. Matter. So, my dear sister, who asked the question, uh, this is it. another way is to engage your leaders, Munya and his cohort. They should find a way to collaborate with the union. In fact, the union director is one of the brilliant ministers I've seen on our continent. He is a thinking man. So he will not have problems with these things we are talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, now go back to your campuses and unleash your creativity. Let's begin to change the face of campus ministry. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor, for the wise words. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have uh, a 10 minute break. Uh, for the meantime, the well, please come up front, Muti Mbiro. And then on another note, uh, all those who have questions concerning Elder Shimuka's last presentation, please write them down. Mopa Security Duyarapeka Ma Reflectors. Now, if it is the elder I know who spoke about money, who is coming, you will be unwise to go out. Stay here and shake yourself. Don't even waste one time. As they are singing, begin to take notes. I was taking notes when you were speaking the last time. Try to do the same. Don't move out. If your friends are out, begin to send the messages to come for their own good. Thank you. Tino Mukuza Shesama Simba Tomu Pambiri Narini Die Timberi Zerenembura Eupe Yuri Singapwi Tino Mutenda Wakati Pisa Mukati Meri Magu Tisingazi we wakati tora kuti isa muci eta hakuna mume muri no pasi wakafana na na Jesus di eche tembura 
eu peiu Tino no amfura patime risere eu peiu Hakuna rimwe jetsi meri noblisa nyota ese Hakuna mumwe muri no pasi wakafana na na Yesu die chete mvura yeu penyu takasaru ta kufambana Yesu mwe ndore kudenga Tino parita ne kuimbira pamsana pe rudoro ake nasi akamira achirana uyandi no kupambura usamurambe uchinyengetwa nezviro zeri no pasi Hakuna mumwe muri no pasi wakafana na na Yesu die chete mvura eu penyu tino no mvura patime rizere eu penyu hakuna ri Jesus Mary no visa no tie se hakuna mumwe muri no pasi wakafana na Jesus die chete mvura eu penyu tino no mvura patime Rizere ne upenyu Hakuna rimwe Jetsi meri no blisa Nyota ese Hakuna mume Muri no pasi Wakafana Nana ye Jesu Die chete mura Ye upenyu Die chete temvura ye upenyu Die chete temvura ye upenyu Tino no mvura patime rizere ne upenyu Hakuna rimwe jetsi meri no visa nyota ese hakuna mumwe muri no pasi wakafana na na Yesu die chete mvura yeu
God cannot change, neither can he lie. What he says today, it will live forevermore. He said, honor your father and your mother, and he never changed. Why do you change what God did not change? Why do you go against the will of God? Never take His mercies as a weakness. Do not wait until His anger rise on you. Make a choice and live within His will. Christ came on this earth, he never changed the law, he obeyed every word to set an example. He died on a Friday, he rose on a Sunday, he never changed the Sabbath, he rested even in the tomb. Why do you go against the wind? of God, never take His mercies as a weakness, do not wait until His anger rise on you, make a choice and live within His will, why do you go against the will of God, never take his mercies as a weakness. Do not wait until His anger rise on you. Make a choice and live within His will. Panguva ya hodom no kuti muri kiche wenyama yose tinoraram tijimukam tinofamba tijisikam tinochakam tijiwana. No kuti muno.
First song from the choristers uh, as we rise. Where you may lead me, I will go, for I have learned to trust him so. But it was for me that he was laying on Calvary. Jesus shall lead me night and day. Jesus shall lead me on the way. He is the true friend to me. For I remember Calvary. For I delight in His command. Love to be led by His end. His divine will is sweet to me. I love and blast in Calvary. Yes, Jesus shall lead me night and day. Oh, Jesus shall lead me on the way. He is the true friend to me. Oh, I remember Calvary. On what I go, no down of be. Yeah, be with Christ, my Savior, team. Trusting that I someday shall see Jesus, my friend of Calvary. Yes, Jesus shall lead me night and day. Oh, Jesus shall lead me on the way. He is the true friend to me. Oh, I remember Calvary. Gatsi Namate Kuna Mari Baba Katendek Mari, one of the Sorok Ding Shrok Tendai, near yet another chance. Ya matipa kutitizizi. Taikumbro ngwarimu ya mtuene angari pa tipedu. Wadefa usha tichaziza ngwari. Tipe wa simba. Le kutitizu gogona kushipraktiza. Tisara rami sima hipokritzi. Na namba chandichikumbira. Buriku danesi tara kristu. Amen. Mission Conference 2024. Present day world dances. Good afternoon, church. Afternoon, present day world dances. If you are happy to be here and you know it, let me hear you say amen. amen. If you are blessed to be here and you know it, let me say amen. amen. If you are marching to Zion and you know it, let me hear you say amen. Amen, amen and amen again. Um, I would like to introduce our officers this afternoon, myself. Edward Evans, uh, your pulpit manager. Our first prayer came from Takudzwa Mugore. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have the privilege of welcoming our very distinguished guest speaker. And as he comes up to the podium, let us give a hearty amen to Elder Chimuka. Amen. Uh, we can do better than that. Amen. 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 amen.
Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, yesterday, you sent questions. I carried the questions and I forgot them at all. But I know you know the questions again, right? You can write them again. So write them and send them. I will start with the question and answer session. So please send the questions that you've got. Just send them. Uh, just write and, 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 uh, and bring them forward, uh, the questions. Um, I was re I'm really being blessed here. Um, the pastor who just presented is from Ghana, right? Is pastor who? Mensa. So last year, uh, in a, from January last year, we decided as a family we were going to save to go for holiday in Ghana. So we were saving, 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 saving. Then we went for holiday in Ghana. The main reason why we were going to Ghana was we wanted to visit some of the places where slave trade was happened. So that's exactly why we went there with the kids. So we went to Ghana and um, we were in Accra. Then from Accra, we went to, uh, to, the, to the, um, the Cape Coast, right? Ghana was called the Gold Coast, right? Before. Why? Is Pastor here? Pastor, are you here somewhere? He's not, he's not close by. Okay, it was called the Gold Coast because there is lots of gold in Ghana. So they could not call it anything else. They just said this coast is full of coast of gold. We call it the what? Uh, the gold coast. Even well after the British have gone, there's still so much gold in Ghana, it's crazy. Uh, the Chinese have taken over where the British have left, but the Ghanaians, or the Ghanaians, as they want to call themselves, are still there. Uh, so the British were mining it, uh, Kwame Kuruma came, many other presidents came, uh, and now the Ghanaians did not mine it. They handed it over to the Chinese who are mining it also uh, on their behalf. So I don't know after some time who they are going to hand it over uh, to again. It's a very beautiful country. When you go to uh, the different castles, we went to a place called Elmina Castle. At Elmina Castle is a place where uh, for your information, last early last year, the vice president of the U.S. What's her name? Annie? Lamini. <laughs> Who? Oh, Camille. Yeah. Okay, so she went to that place and she laid a wreath there. And on that place, she stood there and uh, she cried. When, when you go there, you cannot help but cry uh, because of the atrocities that happened uh, against the, the other. To the Americas, the time would range from zero to three months while you are waiting. There. The food was not enough food. They just said the whole way they would throw the food and like serve you, then grab food from each other. Um, sometimes there will be no water, so they just pour water in there. There were no toilets, so what they do is they designed a small slope uh, with some small, uh, like small furrows where if you pour water, then all the, the material that you have then. It then flows out to another side. So there was no way you could not go out. But on top of it, there was a church, right? And it's still there. So if you go there, you'll be looking inside the dungeon from the church, and they'll be distributing all uh, the food uh, from, from, from up the church. Then if you were a rebellious slave, there was another, there's another place nearby where it's written the door of no return. So you'd be put there, those who were rebellious, cuffed together, and you're supposed to starve to death. So if you were five, if one starved to death, they will close it until all of you have died. So the people who would have died will be sitting next to you. Then they're coming, they realize you're still alive, they close it. 
And you are all dead, then they will call the others, they will take other slaves and just make them see the effects of being rebellious. So in the, in the woman dungeons also, uh, there was no place for anything. You know, even when, if you're on a menstrual cycle or anything, there was no place for anything. But in there also, because there's a colored community close to that place, they would come and pick the women they wanted, you know. And then there was a place where they would then shower them up to prepare them to, to be enjoyed by the, by the slave masters. So we've got a lot of products of, uh, of, uh, of colors in, this, in, in Ghana. What, what I, why I'm giving this as an int- introduction is that because of slavery, because of colonialism, because of the in- education system that we then inherited, a lot of us don't realize that we are actually broken. We are broken in many, many places, and we are generally very angry. So I could see from some of the, the questions that came, uh, one question said, I think you are saying this because you are an oligarch, and, uh, and the things are doing well for you. Uh, so I understood this question. I didn't have any problem with it, because I know that when I was growing up, when I was seeing the things from the other side, I was also very angry. Um, and, uh, and, and you'll be angry for, for, no, for no apparent reason. Um, and that anger can actually affect the way you perceive. The other one coming to me and say, government will stop everything that you want to do if they realize if you do this, this person is angry with the government. The other one came and said, the current leadership, this person, I don't know whether they also want to be a leader, uh, but they are also angry. And I understood those things. And you find that even when you go to the U.S., the people who buy more expensive things than everyone are black people, but they're actually the poorest. They are, they are not wealthy, but if you gauge the ones with more BMWs, the more with Mercedes-Benz, who buy from Louis Vuitton, who buy from Gucci, are the people of our race. So it's a burden for us to be able to lift each other from where we sit. And I, I, I think, like I said, the greatest weapon in the, mind, in the hands of anyone who oppresses is the mind of the oppressed. If I can control your mind, I have done half the job. Everything else, you will do it for me. So that's, that's, that's really, because what we then realized, there are some few graves that are there on the Omina Castle. One of the graves belonged to a priest who was, who was a black man. And he was the one who was used to pulverize uh, the other black, the black people. So they were sent the black person to become hated by the other blacks and be used. So good, good cop, bad cop. They are the nice people. Your own fellow black person is, uh, is the bad one. I'm not trying to teach you anything about, uh, uh, about uh, uh, African Renaissance or such, but I'm trying to just make sure that you understand that when you deal with these things, they have got three dimensions that I mentioned that there is always a philosophy of anything that you are educated by, there is always a sociology of what you are educated by, and there is a psychology. And all these things are deliberate. Uh, Sitting with a guy from South Africa, he is a former CEO of PPC, and he is saying to us, the Bantu education that they got in South Africa, deliberately the apartheid system, deliberately, deliberately, was meant to make sure that this black person does not succeed. And until now, South Africa, when you hear all those challenges in South Africa, they are grappling with the things that they inherited from the past. So it's easy to judge them from now, but you should appreciate that if you give land to a South African, they actually don't know what to do with it. So they they are not even fighting for land. They are fighting more that government can give them free handouts. They want houses for free, this for free, this for free. And you think, oh, they are not, they are stupid. They are not. They have been ingrained. They have been indoctrinated to think the way they are thinking. If I ask you now to apply for an MBA at UZ, you know what the requirements for the MBA at UZ is? They will ask you to write a small motivational one paragraph, Right? What they look at most is your academic qualifications. 
If you go to Harvard for an MBA, they will not ask those questions. They will ask you, what have you been doing in the community? They will ask you, what is the influence? What is the impact? What contribution have you made? They will ask you questions that have got nothing to do with an MBA. If you are in Zimbabwe, if you want to go and do law, 15 points, 12 points, you go to the same universities with three points, someone will go and do law. Right? Here we will make sure that these things are stringent and very difficult. Because we inherited a system that measure people on the basis of how much they are able to retain information rather than how much they are able to contribute to a society. So the more you can retain information, the more important you become. Yet, we are not supposed to be containers of retention of information. Because how do you explain that from 1964 present date, you were having people graduating civil engineering, civil engineering, structural engineer, same engineer, same books, same content, same principles, but the results that the, the Chinese engineer will bring and the Zimbabwean engineer will bring are totally different. All of them engineers. Well, how do you explain that? How do you explain that, that paradox? Right? The paradox is about the philosophy of education. Philosophy of education, so that I can narrow down, is what do you believe to be knowledge? What is knowledge and what is not knowledge? So when I do, I'm designing a curriculum or a system of education, the content that you are going to learn, what we call pedagogics or the science of learning, right? When I'm designing it, I say to myself, this person must learn about a locust, right? Fill in the locust and do this, 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 and have a PhD in locust, right? But when they have finished a PhD in locust, they will go into the society. They become useful whenever I want them to label something. But they are not useful when they, I want them to make something. So the other question was, are you therefore saying education is not necessary? That's not what I'm saying. No. I'm saying when you narrow down to its philosophy, you must be able to define what is learning and what is not learning. Because this education is taking away creativity from you and encouraging you to retain information. No, you're not listening. When you are born, we are born with all creativity. Then the, the education starts sucking out creativity so that by the time you are fully educated, you have lost all your power to create. It should be the other way around. The education must stimulate you to be creative so that by the time you live, hmm? so when in philosophy you are asking questions like, are you educating a person for the benefit of himself or for the benefit of the society? That's a philosophical question. A philosophical question is, is there absolute truth or education is about discovering truth? So if I say the absolute truth, what I'm therefore doing is I'm teaching you truth is absolute so you can't discover anything new. But if I'm teaching you knowing that you can discover truth, I'm giving room for you to come with something else new. So you find that when they were studying the philosophers, there were times when people would be arrested for thinking differently. They will be told there's something wrong with their brain because they are thinking differently. Are you following what I'm talking about? Discuss with the person next to you what you have learned so far.
Okay. We proceed. So, so I'll go to some questions now. Time to, to, to discuss the other things. But let me go to this first question. The first question says, are we all supposed to be entrepreneurs? Or it is all about putting best effort wherever God has placed you? I have a relative of mine who is a graduate trainee at Zimplas, and he earns 1,000 US dollars per month. There are some indigenous people out there who are struggling to make, they can't even clear bills. Uh, indigenous, I think he, she wanted to say indigenous business people. I'll just add that. Out there who are struggling to make, they can't even pay, pay bills. Can we say being employed is bad, considering these two scenarios? Can you please delineate more on this one? Because what worked for you might not work for someone. Tired of being told same statements each and every time. Thank you. I think power my man. Ahoy, my comrades. And I told not back down here. Because uh, we have gone to another level. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I like the way the questions are entertaining discussion, right? Okay, firstly, I've been called to speak about entrepreneurship. So that's what I'm talking about. I've not been called to speak about employment. If they had called me to speak about employment, I could have also told you the advantages of employment. So I don't have a problem with employment. I'm only talking about what I have been called to speak about. So no problem in being employed at all. Right? That's, that's the first statement. Right? The general statement I made about education applies whether you are employed or not. So, understanding what options are there is important. And this is important for this, and mark this, and it's a very important part of the answer. When we are educated the way we are educated, we are only given one option. When I'm speaking about entrepreneurship, I'm giving you a second option. That means at least you have two options. You only had one initially. Now we have two. Right? Now, because there is no school that teaches people about money, yet, when we are learning, we want to make money. It's a disadvantage. So, we are teaching you about something that you are not ordinarily taught at school. So, that's the objective of this. The objective is not to change you from your desire to become an employee and become an entrepreneur. No, no, no. The objective is to give you more options so that if you didn't know, you don't wake up and say, ah, I wish someone had told me I had an option of not being an employee. You understand? Yeah. yeah. So, so you just go home with options. You don't necessarily go thinking unemployment uh, or not being employed is bad. That's number one. Number two, if indigenous people, business people are struggling, they may struggle for many reasons but it does not make the concept bad. There are many reasons why people will watch, will struggle. Uh, we spoke about the process of making a startup work, right? And I'm going to give you a few examples of possible businesses, right? Uh, just to discuss business that people could possibly start, even at school, even Just sit down and think every day, right? What you'll be thinking. There are many reasons why people would fail. And the third thing, and that is uh, uh, the challenging one, of this person who is working at Zimplatz, you will find that there were possibly 200 CVs. We, we advertised for a job for an HR position. We had almost 5,000 applications for one position. right? So this person who chances and gets a graduate trainee at Zimplatz cannot be the standard for everyone. We also want to cater for the other 
4,999 who didn't get a job to also have an option. You get it? Yeah. So those options are available. They are not meant uh, to, to, to canonize you into thinking, ah, entrepreneur is the one who's successful. The last one is, I'm not standing here to demonstrate that I'm the smartest one and you are the stupid ones. I only happen to be the invited one. You could actually be, you could actually be here also. You get it? Because you also have a story. It's not like I'm the only guy with a story. So you could also be here. So if you are tired, we also give opportunity to those who are tired. Uh, if they have a story to share their what? To say, guys, I was tired. This guy spoke about entrepreneurship. I ventured into employment and things are working. Are, are you getting it? Is that clear? Thank you very much. Uh, the advantage is that uh, the person who asked, no, I'll give you. Yeah, let, let not your house be troubled. You believe in me, <laughs> in my father's house, and many businesses. If you were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare. <laughs> Okay, last time you mentioned quite a number of things. We need to consider a business, e.g. market. These very things are the very same set, setbacks that makes us fear testing the waters. Any advice? So I, I, I had a chance to meet one guy here who came to ask me about business. Then I said, do you have a girlfriend? And he says, he, he was shy at first. I don't know whether the girlfriend is embarrassing or not. But he, then later on, he grinned and giggled and said, yes, I have a girlfriend. Then I said, okay, here at camp, at camp, if you come and you don't have a girlfriend, if you call any girl, say hi, if you just say hi, what is in the thought process of that girl? I'm in danger every year. Could there is a probability to go from the way to go out of number yako. Are you following? Then I asked the same guys, the same guy, you have been discussing about courtship meeting. Is there a place where you sat down and discussed business? How many times did you discuss a business opportunity with your girlfriend? How many times did you kneel and plan that there could be a business that we could open together? How many times did you meet just as a group? Okay, I'll give you another question. Raise your hands, those who read the budget, national budget after announcement, in detail. And this is the paper this is the finance act that is going to determine the allocation of resources for the whole year. And you don't know it. Now, someone who read the budget and take advantage of the budget and you think they are corrupt. Because inside the budget, they have allocated where money is going, how youths are going to access money, how many times, who, who knows the minister of youth? Who has visited the minister of youth here? We have seen the Minister of Youth. 
the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Youth, the deputy minister, who has visited the minister where my SME. Who knows the last time they were distributing the armor mirrors for, for gold? You don't know that, right? But you can spend time discussing how to approach a girl, what to say when they are. Spend time discussing that. It does not come in a flash to understand this. They are deliberate. And when I speak like that, it can be sound like borderline insulting people. No, it's not. I'm trying to make you realize that most of the questions we are asking, they're actually within our environment and we are not looking for them. We are not looking for them. So you're saying last time you mentioned we are scared of the market. But there are a lot of market linkages that demystify the market. The market is a mystery. It becomes demystified. Are you following? Am I making sense? Vunza munu wako kuti zuruku mega sense. Hakuna munu wemunu, but jingo vunza munu. Tuzuruku mega sense. Hanzi chine munu. Hapa wasukutu mbo vunza na vunzwa. Okay, so, 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 this, this is where I, I find it hard. At church, at church, we teach that you should not date someone who's not Adventist. Is that correct? Is that correct? How many of those who are, not, who are dating non-Adventists? Raise up your hands. Who are dating? Right? But, but that means we are going against the what? The teaching. But the second thing is, God did not give Eve to Adam before Adam had a garden he was looking after. Is it also, if it's a sin to date an Adventist, is it also not a sin to date someone as you are with? Are you not square house in the So I was, I was reviewing that sometimes, oh, listen, listen, guys, we don't have much time. I was reviewing that at church sometimes, these Dorcas women will come and say, your boyfriend is not doing anything in life. He's not good for you. Then you say, but he prays. What is this prayer that caused someone not to be industrious? How much have we prayed so much that we have become so ineffective and irrelevant on earth and only relevant for heaven. So these things, these questions you should ask because they are deep philosophical questions that ask that if he is dating me, the principal is the man is the provider. Can he provide? And these are the things that we are talking about. So, they say if your dream does not scare you, then it's not big enough. Your dream must cause you to have goosebumps when you think of it. So, don't be scared of the market. Right? Don't be scared of the market. Chishona Jinonzi, Atea Mario Murucha, Achachki. Dimata Ore Soso. Next question. Elder, how can I start a viable farming project? How can I attend my own, uh, can I own my own land as a student? We have no rural air land. NB, we have no rural land. Okay, so when the land reform program happened, almost three quarters of the over 90% of the good arable land was owned by white people. 
that's about 11 million hectares uh, that, were, that were taken from, from, uh, from the white farmers. Now, I don't sit in a space where I want to discuss whether getting the farms was good or bad. I'm not debating that because there's a whole history to the taking of the farms and not having them. And usually as Adventists, and I'm an Adventist, we sometimes delve into discussions that are not relevant for us. You know, whether government is good, whether... I'm not discussing politics. I'm t discussing access to opportunities because you are a Zimbabwean. And if you understand you are a Zimbabwean, you have a right to any opportunity, whether you are a M MDC, whatever, C, Red C, all the Cs, and it, uh, you have a right to what? To everything that Zimbabweans have a right to. So I was analyzing the issue of land myself and realized that most of the people who got land, some of them have got no capacity to, to work on the land. And those people now, if you go to them, who got in the map on their part, they can list that land to you at almost nothing because they are never there on the land. It is you have to be outgoing. And most of the land is close to rivers. You can go there and do that. And I have actually a particular uh, example on that. A one guy, uh, I think he's a teacher at Hillbright. I'll, I'll find out his name. Who is also growing uh, some, 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 some green millies. So, for instance, for you, you can go look for anyone with land close to water. You discuss with them for one hectare, only one hectare. 10,000 square meters. Maybe the, the footprint of this place times, times two. This looks like 5,000 or times two and a half. Looks like 4,000. Then you get that land. With 2,500, you can put a maize crop on irrigated land. You then have to take the water from there. So if you're doing dry land farming, you need 1,350 to do maize. Uh, on dry land farming. That is inclusive of fertilizers, your ammonium nitrate, uh, your, your basal fertilizer, your top dressing fertilizer. It includes your agrochemicals on that particular amount. Right? If you are doing it for green millies, follow very closely. Are you following? You get one hectare. You don't need to own the land. People love owning things. Right? You don't need to own it. Right? You can lease it. And the Ministry of Agriculture is allowing for you to sign leases that are registered in the Ministry of Agriculture. And I'll give you an example of that lease. You see where Glen City is? Our campsite, Glen City. There is a farmer who was given that land. And the, the elder Sarchera and another crew went to meet the farmer, signed a, a, a 99 year lease, sub list with him, and went to register with the Ministry of of agriculture. So this person cannot wake up and chuck them out. That's why all that infrastructure is built. And the way that infrastructure built is built, is built from crowdfunding, where you say this member, this member, then they will say you own shares. You've got part shares in what? In the chalets that are there. He doesn't have to build it. He just thinks it. You get it? So if you had 2,500, you will plant and you need 25 kgs to plant a one hectare on one hectare, on a 90% germination percentage, you get about 53,000 crops per one hectare. 53,000. You get it? Right? On one hectare. From that 53,000, if you sell dollar for four, you get about 13,000 US dollars. Dollar for four for green millies. You get the sense? And you can do green millies three times in a year. Right, depending on the heat units in the area that you are you are planting the maize, you can do it at least two times a what? A year. Now, if you put two thousand five hundred, if we all year as students work together and say we are going to have food zero 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 one zero zero one zero zero one zero zero one, you know what I mean, right? <laughs> zero zero one or zero zero half zero zero half, like 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 that. You can actually save enough to go and plant. Are you following? Right. When I was at college 2000, that's where the, the land invasions were happening. 
So me and my other friend actually went on a tractor. We had war veterans were going to invade. So we said we want to go. And we went to Lilam, that, is on, that was owned by Sam Levy. It had almost three compounds where people did not know each other on the same farm. You know, it's good. There's a combo here, combo, combo, you know. And, and, and we went around, and the people were taking farms, dividing, and we were getting to understand how it happens. You, have, you understand? I was also still a preacher when I was at university. But I made sure that there's nothing that can happen in my country and I should not know. What is the purpose of being, being in my country where I'm in ignorant? It's like a father who is having his house being run by another man. No, you're not listening. If, if, I, if I come to your house and you are with your wife, right, and there's a wheelbarrow in the yard, you tell your wife, I don't want this wheelbarrow to be borrowed next door. And you come back in the afternoon and you find the wheelbarrow parked next door you know you are no longer the father. The person who has caused the Uber to be transferred to the other person is the one who is ruling both yards. So I cannot let the Uber be transferred without me knowing what's happening. Why, why should I do that? Are you getting it? So if you plant and you've got your one hectare, that's the harvest you get. Are you with me? So, I, I've got my young brother here, uh, who is also farming. And I looked at him, and he, he, he did like this, say, please don't mention my name. So I will not mention him. He, he went to someone's farm. He's actually leasing a farm. Someone, a war veteran, who's got his own farm, and he's sitting in here. And he's supplying tomatoes, right? I, uh, I want to ask the tons now of tomatoes. I don't know how to ask him. <laughs> but he is supplying so many tons per week of tomatoes. Every week he is supplying tomatoes. Right? We are, he is a graduate. So these things that we are talking about appear far-fetched, but they are mindset issues. And if you tell me you don't want it, you are tired of it. It's not my problem. Whether you believe you can or you cannot, you are right. If you believe you can't, you are right. If you believe you can, you are also right. I'm not going to argue with you. You are right. Tell the person whatever you are thinking are right. Tell them. Um, are we still all here? Are we benefiting something? Just wave if you are here. If you are here. Okay. So if you see your eyes getting smaller and smaller and you no longer see me, yeah, it's a common disease after eating in the afternoon. But my grandmother you say, used to say, please don't sleep in public. By the time you wake up, everyone might be laughing. So please don't sleep in public. The other statement here say, do we need capital? Are we there? Are we there? Do we need capital to start a business or we need solid, solidly laid out plans? Many months and it. I'm sorry and it. Alumina, we have to find another time. We will not have our breakaway. Okay. I, I, I say it depends what you define as capital. Those who study human resources, it used to be called human resources management. Now it's called what? Human capital. 
Because human beings are, if you look at the balance sheet, yeah, PSG or Real Madrid and Manchester United, their players are the assets on the balance sheet. You get it? So I was reading today because when I support a soccer team, I support it on the basis of the balance sheet. If I say I'm an Arsenal supporter, I look at the financials, then support them. So the team that I support most is Arsenal and Real Madrid. It's got nothing to do with soccer. It's everything to do with their business model. Because that's what I'm trying to understand. You get it? So that, that, that last year, follow me closely. Are you there? Are you there? Yeah. So I'll look at the model that they used to buy and how they made money without expending much. Right? I'll look at the players that they bought and their resale value. That you buy Sanya for 250, then sell him for 16 million. Right? So I look at the, at the profitability of a venture and then try to learn what are the principles that I'm then really that's where I'm driving you to. You need capital, but the first capital you need is your brain way. If that capital is not there, you can destroy even a lot of money. Okay, let me give you an example here. Right. Is there anyone who wants capital in their business? Who, who wants capital? Come. You want capital? What's your name? Bianca. Bianca. You can stand there. Okay. Bianca needs some capital. How much do you want? I think about 500 would be enough. 500. What do you want to do with five hundred dollars? Okay, you want to start a baking company. Okay, what do you want to bake? Uh, cakes, cupcakes, cookies, brownies, just confectionery. Okay, so can you give us a breakdown? How are you going to use five hundred? I'm going to buy the machinery that I will use. What is the machinery? There is a cake mixer by Kenwood. It costs about $180. Uh -huh. I need cake tins, um, depending on the shapes and the sizes, small, medium, large, square, mm -hmm. circle, different shapes as well. Okay. About $30 um, for all of that. I mm -hmm. also need piping bags. Um, what are they called? The piping tips, cake okay. boards, boxes. So, so I heard you. Who are you going to compete with for cakes? For making cakes? Um, I don't know a lot of companies that are doing cakes, but the, the few that I know that are in the business, there's Helen Cakes, um, there are some uh, individual bakers. So who are your competitors? Who are you going to compete, to compete with? Directly. I don't know in terms of your competitors. Do you know who you are, you are going to compete with? I haven't made up a, a specific competitor at the moment. But, but you have already decided you want to prepare cake. Yes. Who do you want to sell these cakes to? Anyone who needs them, uh, people with birthdays, weddings, um, a lot of people. Wait, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that, please. That, that is really bad. No, that's a no. No, no, guys, no, 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 we can't do that. We can't. That's really, really bad. I'm, I'm not happy with this. Okay, go ahead. I was saying it, it just varies with where the need is. If mm. people have birthdays, people have weddings, any celebration. So have you ever prepared any cake before? I did. At home? Yes. Okay. Have you sold the cakes? Yes, I have. How, much, how many cakes have you sold to date? Um, on average, I sell at least three cakes in a month. Three cakes in a month. For how much? Um, depending on the size. My smallest cake goes for 25. Largest goes for 50. How much profit are you making per month? Um, in a month, I make a profit of about 120. 120? Yes. How, how many months have you been doing it for? It's been nearly a year now. A year. So, got 12 times 120. Can we my play? <laughs> um. Guys, guys, relax. How much? 1,440. 1,440? 
Fort. Okay. How much do you have? Currently, mm. about 300. You have 300 from your profits? Yes. Do you still need 500? Yes, I do. On top of the 300? Yes, I do. So you actually need 800? Yes, I, I think in total I need 800. Because um, with the money that I have, I still use it to invest into the future cakes that come in and orders. So if someone else places an order, I take from my savings to add on to the ingredients that I needed, then I make profit. So with $120 every month, do you say, I'm now asking you, can we say this person is now in cake business? With $120 profit? Now, this is where you are supposed to learn. She is still in subsistence business. You know what subsistence is? She is still in survival business. Because in 12 months, this business was not able to raise enough capital to even treble or triple itself. If you want to go into a certain business, you should have enough skill for you to be able to be profitable to sustain that business without it being subsistence. The moment she employs someone in this business, she's already in trouble. Right? So, from what she's saying, she's clear. But the next thing that we we're going to discuss after the concept of a startup was scalability. How do you scale the business from being small to being biz, big? So that you don't have this business that always goes around in the same, same space. Maybe I want to give you one million. Okay, what would you do with one million? You can sit down. <laughs> she is now in trouble. So what I'm realizing that most of the things that we say we want capital, we actually don't know what we want. If I ask a person here, if I give you one million, what do you do with one million? Does it, there, is there someone who knows what they want to do? Or you'll be saying like that other guy, she won't buy a million years. Could I understand and pay a million years? Okay, it's got to say, I get over the yard and it's part of etiquette. So most of the things that we say about capital are not really true. There is general the standard that if you think of an idea, you must always think of how to structure. And I'm giving an example of myself in this particular instance. So in the year 2007, 2008, I think that was one of the toughest years, right? For those who, who, was, who were born by that time. Um, I think all of us were born eh? by 2007, 2008. If we were not born, then pathfinders are not here, right? Okay, 2008, 2000. So that, that's part of the year. You know, those times you tried this, tried, I've tried more than 50 businesses, I think. Most of them failed, right? So in that time, uh, you are broke but looking for ideas when things are difficult. So I discovered all the shelves, most of the shelves were empty, right? But people still needed product, right? So there was a company called, you know a company called Pro Plastics? Is there anyone who knows it? What do they do? They manifest a pipe and conduit pipes for electrical cables, right? So I figured this company was not manufacturing in that laid off employees, right? Are you following? So then I figured that there was a company in town that was called Granite Side Hardware. They needed conduits. So I said, and what triggered it is because I wanted conduits. 
then they were not conscious. And I was asking myself, how can they not be conscious when there is proplasty? So I will go to granite side and it says, no, they, we, are, we are not, because proplastic is not manufacturing. I go to proplastic, I say, why don't you have uh, uh, conduits? And it says, we are not manufacturing at the present moment. We don't have foreign currency. To what? To import. Then I said, okay. Who supplies you the PVC compound to, to make the conduit? Then they said, Sasso in South Africa. I ask Sasso, why not... The, the supply, the people who are supplying. Why are you not supplying the countries? They say we are not supplying countries because we have not been paid. They are not paying for countries. Can you see the problem? The market is there. The market is willing to pay for the conduit. The distributor is there. The manufacturing is there. The supply of the raw material is there. What is simply needed is the brain way to connect this theory. Solve this equation for me. Solve it. Don't look at me. Solve the equation. My sister, let not that brother sleep on you. That's what is going to happen. Okay. So, so when I was solving this, 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 this problem, the first thing that I needed, that you need to build all the time is build relationships. Right? Build what? Relationships. There are people here who believe in being alone, being aloof, who you read your Bible, you go on your own quiet time. It's good to have quiet time, but build relationships. That's one, two, build networks. They say your net worth, worth, your network is your net, right? How much you are worth is not uh, determined by the, the, the money you have, but the, the, the crowd that you hang out, hang out with. So in my, in my network, I had someone who was working at the bank, and I asked them, uh, would you finance this? And he says, no, 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 no. You, do, you need to have a house, capital to finance it, blah, blah, blah. Then I said, okay, that's fine. What if you finance it and I don't want to own it? You finance it and you own it. So what does it mean? Say, you know what? If you pay in South Africa and the, to Sasso, and Sasso brings the PVC compound to Proplastic, Proplastic produces it and it sends to granite site. In all this, I don't want to own it. You all, you'll be owning everything. All I want you to give me is my profit after you have owned anything, everything. When it's sold, at, the, at every stage, I must know the price. Then when we finish, I come and collect my profits, you remain owning the everything. I don't want to own anything. Then you say, mm, what's the risk? The risk is if I own it, I, do, I have nothing, I'll run away with it. Right? Then says, no, 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 no. What if people don't buy? And I said, okay, it's fine. What if I make the people come to the bank and confirm that they will buy once the product is with you? I still don't own anything. Now, you have covered your risk that it won't be sold, Right? At the same time, you have excluded this risky poor guy out of the equation. Right? Because he can't own things that he is not handling. Then he said, oh, but there's a crisis in Zimbabwe. Then I said, that is the opportunity, the crisis. Because people are willing to pay a price that they would not ordinarily pay. So for this deal, you are going to make 65% where you would have lended money to someone and only get 10% per annum. 
but you are going to get 65 cut off in one deal. Where would you get that money from? So everyone now is crumbling to want to do your deal. Because the money is not in getting money. The money is in the deal. If the structure doesn't pay, you will not get capital. The structure must make sense and pay for you to get capital. I have too many people who phone asking for money. You should know one thing. When I ask for money from someone, it's because I have decided that I will make more money for them. I will only ask for money from you if it's going to benefit you, not if it's benefiting me. Why should you say, you know, in a business idea, I'm going to fund day. Why should I fund you? You think I have money that is sitting to look for someone to fund? <laughs> Who does that for sure? When you are in a house, you cook a big, big pot of salsa like this. Then you eat just one quarter of it. Then you put it on the stage just in case visitors will come. You cook when the visitors have what? If you do that every day, you run out of milli meal. Another pot, another pot. No. And each visitor who comes, it's either subtracting value or adding value you then see how the table is set, is determined on their agenda. So that's where the dichotomy is. People want capital that is free. They don't want to commit themselves to that and pay a price for the capital. People will come and say, I want 500. You see this, this young lady? Wanted 500. She should say, I want 800, but I'm committing 300 to it. Because she actually wanted 800. But she said she wanted what? No, what he's saying is okay. <laughs> Say amen for the brother. Now, what he said, you don't know what he said, but it's good. That's why you said amen. So I'm continuing now. I'll be a bit faster now. What's your take on forex trading? Okay, my first take is my first take is don't do anything that is illegal. That's the first take. And I'll put a caveat to it. Forex trading World over, it's actually a business. There are people who sit with huge screens who make arbitrage. You call it arbitrage. Those who are doing economics. Are you here? They call it arbitrage. Where you are making a margin from the differential between the value of one currency to the other. And this value, the currency is always fluctuate. So there are people who are actually trading on different platforms with different. So they will know that the yen has gained against the US, move their money to the yen, when it is the yen that is the US that has gained the pound, they'll be moving, switching currencies on the screen. They'll be in, in a room with big screens like that. All they are doing is a trading platform for what? For Forex. What they may do, those people, is to invite you to be an investor. Where you invest in their arbitrage trading platform. But because arbitrage is both an art and a science, uh, the artist might fail to draw you might lose money during the time of artwork. Are, are you getting it? But arbitrage is not, is, not, is not new. But in the Zimbabwean context, you will find that arbitrage is based on people who are moving currents. Right? So the currency risk, you will find it, 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 it has been for a long time. We suffer it every time. Because we, like when you do make roads, you get paid in local currents, but you are then supposed to import a commodity in U.S. dollars. There is always a currency challenge. You will find at the present moment, the official rate is at 22,000. There is an unofficial rate is about 30,000, 32,000. What I do from where I sit is, I'm always trying to find out what is the best strategy for hedging, right? Sometimes you forward price so that you can what? You can hedge so that you, the expected price for next week is the price for today. 
But the challenge with that is you can also outprice what? Outprice yourself. Some obviously rehedge and just focusing on trading in what? In the in the in the hard currents. But but I wouldn't want to delve in whether when the rate moves or down, whether it is right or not. I I think what I do is I do my my pastel analysis, which is to analyze the macroeconomic environment and say, what can I do within this context? And where do I gain? I've got specific strategies uh, that would need time, but suffice it to say, I always say when you have a business, try to control all the most important variables. Don't let the variables that are critical for you be controlled by someone else. So we call it a self-regulating ecosystem. So that's when I was trying to start my business, I was always looking at ecosystems and asking, if I don't control this variable, what if happens to everything else if I don't control this? Right? If you are in the business of making sweets, your most important variable is sugar. Right? If you do not have a strong line of sugar supply, and some competitor con controls your sugar supply, then you are in trouble. You are always supply supposed to control your most important variables. This can be a little bit heavy, uh, but uh, you must up your, your mental digestive system to be able to get to that level uh, so that you can be able to compete at that level. Udzamunar Pasait Bagotu Root Digester, This question, I think it was answered. Raising capital is not difficult, but securing it is. Working on a budget of, say, 500, Yahweh per 450, one can be tempted to use it. What principles of business can help? Right. I think uh, if you invite Elder Mandukuza Stole, we we'll always say, Mbewa it say, Mbewa it kiwe. So that, that question uh, is straightforward. How do you promote diversity and inclusion within your organization? I think this one is looking for a job. What advice would you give to, a young, to young women aspiring to, to pursue leadership in the business world? Uh, what I can say is in simple, in business, there's, there's no, there are no prisoners. You understand? When you go to war, uh, especially the wars where it's ruthless, they will say we are taking no prisoners, which means even if they capture anyone, they will kill them. That is where the statement came. They are prisoners of war, right? But when they say we are taking no prisoners, it means when they go on ground, even if you surrender, they will shoot you. So in business, no one takes prisoners. Apana muna no nzugura mwana umwe munu business. When they are competing with you, they will, they, they will compete. Sometimes, uh, for us, we will be competing fair and square. Others will use any methods that in their book. So I'm saying to the young women, to the young men, business is going to be difficult. It's a difficult territory. But not only that, even in employment, things are very difficult but what I have found is that cream will always rise to, be to, to the top. You have to spend time, hours, looking at options, analyzing options. And you will fail sometimes, it's okay. You will make mistakes sometimes, it's okay. What I do when I make mistakes sometimes is just to laugh at myself. Sit down and laugh. Laughing at me to say, yeah, yeah. And sometimes you go, you lose a tender. I tell myself, Warok, I'm town to obey. This is town. These people. So I, I remind myself that you know what? You win some, you what? Just, just relax, calm down. Don't be too hard on yourself when you do that. When someone I'm, said, I'm tired of this, it's usually because they are too hard on, on themselves. 
Yeah, this one will do it. What are the best marketing strategies at campus? Uh, what time is it now? Okay, I've got uh, 15 more minutes. Okay, on your first presentation, you should say, you should stop competing, we should collaborate. How did you look? Did you look for people to fund your ideas or did you do it the other way around, considering that you might come with an idea that is not related to my field of study? Uh, study. How do you avoid getting your idea stolen? Stolen. And how do you deal with such collaboration? Collaboration. So, there's going to be an, a drought this year, right? Did you read the statistics from the Minister of Agriculture? How many tons do we need per, per annum for Zimbabwe? How many tons? Watora my phone number, Rwanda, houses your matter and Rufa no, it does it. Okay, let me proceed. So you need, you need this. Zimbabwe needs about 2 million tons of uh, maize uh, per annum. Right? About 2 million tons. This year, we are expecting to harvest between 400 to about 600,000 tons of maize. Of the 2 million tons, 400,000 tons is for stock feed. 1.6 million is for human consumption, right? So there's going to be a drought this year. Are you with me? No, that's, that's a drought. What is the effect of the drought? The effect of the drought is that we are now importing GMO maize for, for consumption, but not for growing. So what it means is we import the maize. We've got a person who sits by the milling company, there'll be a policeman who ensures that the maize is not taken away and grown in the fields so that we end up having GMO what? Maize. South Africa, who normally exports to us, generally do about 16 million tons per annum. They downgraded to 14 million. The latest uh, statistics as of last week, they are expecting an harvest of about 12 million. Their consumption is exactly 12 million. They have got maize that is remaining from the previous years. Zambia doesn't eat GMO, so they won't import GMO. But they are importing yellow maize from Ukraine and Russia, which is non-GMO uh, for human consumption. Um, so here we are going to have uh, GMO maize. So that shortfall, we need someone to cover the shortfall, right? The headline on Standard today says milling mill prices skyrocket, right? Did you see that headline? You didn't. Okay. That's okay. So, again, th that is the information that is the one that you make uh, to make decisions for business. We call it management information system. Those are the tools of management to make what? Decision. You can't decide without information. It's like going to an ex exam. You don't decide which number to answer when you have not read anything. Even if they give you number one up to 50, if you have not read anything, you can't answer. Unless if it's A, B, C, then you just is praying, worry. I do, I do a ch straight A's, next I do B's, and do C's, and you know, um, yeah, you know, guesswork. So if that's the main situation, what has happened in Matabeleland? How many cattle has died in Matabeleland so far? You don't know again? Guys? Okay, that's fine. Okay, Genesis 1 verse 1. You must know both. That's why it's which is not just the children of darkness are wiser. That's what he's talking about. That they will know about weaves. 
and styles, but not knowing about relevant information. Anyway, I'll become angry. Let me be focused. So in Zarabani, cattle will die, goats will die. So the price will might start moving away from the $40 to about $20, roundabout. So if, because they were op- the borders were open for maize, the general price for maize is $420 per ton. You can bring maize from South Africa at the present moment. If Murima 101, if you go and into the farms, even in Zimbabwe, you can lend for maize for $350 per ton. If you come up to get the Muri 50 and you do, when we say $50, $50, and start buying maize, you will take this maize, drive to Mzaraban, give them maize, butter deal, you get the maize, you get the goats, you come with the goats to Harare, a goat for $20. Once you lend here in Harare, the same goat is now $40. 100% profit. Right? The maize is there, you must know. We've got the grain belt of Zimbabwe, Marsh West, Marsh Central. When the Minister of Agriculture is giving statistics of harvest, it will give you by province, by district. So you actually know in this district there will be a banba harvest, and in that district there will be no harvest. Are you getting what I'm talking about? And you can put all this man together, get the Mbuzis, bring them here, and they will trade. And within no time, that association, that's where collaboration is. That association starts making its what? It's liquidated. And that switching, that ability to switch from one to the next, from one to the next, which is switch, it's a trading business. So it doesn't necessarily have to be one thing. You can trade things and switch and trade from different commodities to what? To other commodities. At the present moment, most of the white traders are bringing in between 20 to 25,000 tons of maize every month. Right? Every week, actually. 20 to 25,000. Because we need almost 100, uh, about 75,000 tons of, of, of maize that we can eat per month. Then you need for stock feed. So if you have those, that information, it then it helps you. How do you make this decision? How do you make this decision? I think Tara, right. and it's going to go one more question. Okay. The questions are many. Let me just read many, then I'll see. Is there someone who wrote a question with who they thought it was burning and was not attended to in what I was saying? Where you are not afraid to say. You wrote a question. What did you write? Oh, it was a private one. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm trying to discourage because I don't want to meet people after this. There are a lot of people who are coming with personal questions. I don't have the time for everyone, uh, to, be, to be honest. People who phone me say I'm popular for not answering my phone. Uh, What's your take on taking the non-profit organization route? It's good. Uh, can you make money from it? It's not for profit, if you have just said. <laughs> How to successfully venture into business as a student and not disappointing your family's expectations, especially when they view it as a waste of time. This is the most difficult part of starting a business. Uh, people saying, mm, you are wasting time. Uh, the battle is real. And I'm saying to you, it is your preparation for the business that usually convince you first before you convince others. And if, if you want, if you have a vision, don't worry about people. Worry about convincing yourself. Because most of the, it is said, if you can deal with the enemy inside you, the enemies outside you will do you no harm. The greatest enemy is you. 
when you self out, when you criticize yourself, when you look at failure and 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 it and it grabs you and it causes you to be afraid. When you do inside name outside you will not have any. Do you have a startup incubator that can help entrepreneurs mentorship ideation to scaling up? Not necessarily support with money and be. <laughs> okay. No, we don't have any startup. We are, we are, we are, I think PCM should try to mainstream this uh, because I see that we, we do a lot of sermons, uh, uh, which is good. We do a lot of uh, value laden issues relating to excellence, but we don't teach people this. And I want to change it from being about entrepreneurship. I want to call it sustainable livelihoods. Right. So we teach more about sustainable livelihoods so that you can learn to sustain yourselves after. You get the sense? Yeah, most of the challenges we have now, youths, people want to, to wed. They're coming to elder, towards real rice, you know. Since I just got a donation best, you know, they want to marry. They want to marry from Romo from an elder. And she's saying, are we going to call on this wife? What is going to happen? You know? So all these things are creating huge, huge problems. They will not appear important now when they are saying, I love you. But from I love you, behind every I love you, there's a responsibility. You get it? Elder, do you come, do you? Yeah. I think this, this one is studying medicine. Elder, do you give capital for a business, if I have a business idea or have a small business which is running but need to boost uh, it, how best can you help? <laughs> yes, we give capital. Mental capital. <laughs> no, but we can direct you in the right direction. We have got relationships with banks at top level, we can help you to redo your proposal. We've got an investments place, but the, we, we need this business idea that comes to be reasonable. If you come something that works above 500,000 going, something that is, you know, that is solid. You know, if someone comes with a small owner, we direct you to the other people who can deal with, uh, with the other ventures that, that needs uh, that kind of help. Is that okay? Is that okay? Okay. If I start a hustle, at what stage should I register it for it to be recognized as legal company? Can you say amen for this guy? <laughs> How can you become a successful entrepreneur without participating in politics? Nowadays, it seems as if one should be involved in politics for his or her business to grow and to be successful and recognized. That's an important question. So, so I'm not in politics. I, I'm, I don't have a, a political office anyway. I do business. But in every uh, economy, when you are a significant a business person, you interact with those who are ruling that, that country. Wherever you are. If, if you go to America, who wanted to do a business in Zambia for lithium, we had to meet the Minister of Mines who said we should meet the President. We want to do the same thing in Swaziland. I was invited to see the King. I could not just go to Swaziland as if it was my place. It's not my backyard. The King, if you are doing a scalable business, that's big. They will know what you are doing, and they want to understand. Do you, maybe you have an agenda to destabilize the country. They must understand. If you are transparent, why will you, not, why will you be worried for a politician to look at your things? Unless you have an agenda to destroy the politician. If it's genuine, and you have won a big tender, the politician come, come and ask what happened. He should be able to share ruling the country. So there's no problem in what? Uh, in, in that. I don't see any, any problem. You have your own views. But that's, that's uh, the position. I, I don't know what this person has written. Uh, do you have some business that you have already that is being affected by politics uh, that you would want us to discuss about? <laughs> uh, 
This one is about, about loans, about capital. Again, we've spoken about this. Uh, capital raising can be a different topic that we can look at. How do we differentiate between a real potential investor and someone who wants to get your idea, tell you it does not work, and then implement it later without you? I, I, I personally realize that you can't steal an idea from anyone. Because once you think of an idea, if you want to, we've got lawyers here. Are there any lawyers? I saw Sena and others. Are there lawyers? These lawyers have got ways of making sure that your idea is safeguarded. That's their business. But we want to be a jack of all trades. You have an idea, you don't even go to consult your own brothers. If they are going to put a, a, a patent, if they are going to put a copyright, isn't, you've got that at law, right? It's already provided for. So that when you are going to discuss with an, in, 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 with an investor, the, the provisions are already there. So the ideas cannot be stolen. In most cases, what we might worry about thinking this idea, someone already thought about it. And we spend time saying, my idea will be stolen, my idea will be stolen, and someone will implement it. And before you know it, you become irrelevant. Right? So, so it's very important uh, to open up. Let me not do the other ones. I'll do two more. How do you effectively build a brand awareness of a, of a startup? What is the most viable business to venture on in this modern era? <laughs> no, 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 no. This one is a brilliant question. I have actually realized AI, artificial intelligence. This, this is a big issue in that most of the jobs are going to become irrelevant because of artificial intelligence, right? But because we are still in the primary production level in our countries, in the third world countries, AI can also create a lot of opportunities for us. Right? So it depends how you, how you view the, 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 the same thing uh, on AI. Um, building brands, this is a whole topic on discussing brands and branding. Uh, I will not delve into, into, into it. Now, this one is interesting. Then I'll finish with this one. With a 93% literacy rate in Zimbabwe as of 2022, Zimstat statement, do you still believe that education system is a uh, university? Uh, do you still believe in the education system in our invest? Please note that answers are provided in brackets. <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> So clearly the person who wrote this is a, is a victim of the education system. Because he believes that the answers are two. Yes or what? So I, I gave you the example of green millies, right? It can apply even if you do um, a greenhouse. It can ap uh, apply if you do... Um, you know, the, the, there is a shortage even of uh, ginger, tsangamids. You know, kukuruwa tsangamids, right? You find, go to the shops, there'll be no tsangamids. No one grows tsangamids in here, right? Simple things like that. I have spoken to you of gods. There are some things that also the children of, uh, of who are not the children of light are doing. You go to Mpezamanamo, you know, to Mpezamanamo, you can buy clothes for one dollar. Two dollars. They go there, on how much select properly, right? Clean them up, right? Make them up, make them up. What is some plastic aganak? And when they are, they come from the uptown. Remember, it's about thirty dollars. Those are maga fake resources. And the advantage here, remember, they go go. No one has it. But I know people who decided they are doing my blouse chat. They will go and bring my blouse. What is my trousers chat? And they will make sure as long as you my machine is no blouse. My steamer is a canaka. You buy a polish, you buy a 
kanzo drinking guys one the the chemical in it or two new you know and so what hey it's cheating it's what what it's new and it's gonna when they buy a second in japanese car they say i've bought a what it's new to the person who has it so you come and they'll bring them from downtown uptown umani to my vest yet actually they can't my vest I asked another person yesterday. We've got lots of business people in Zimbabwe. Say for instance Nigel Chanakira or Elder Takwere or Shingemtas or whoever. Vano gero wakupi. You go there, you get juice before you are bubbled. How much would I be willing to pay? Imagine the price, Ashoka. But same Chigero, different location, different prison. You create an app where you put them all on that app and you know that after Agerwa, they will always take after two weeks and then go to Agerwa food. The, the app reminds him. And you can set in a network of approved barbers on your app. The same way you do Uber. The closest barber to the person, Kana Buka, will go immediately to their office. Home Baba. You can do it this with maids. Instead of having a payment made at my house, and it, I can have maids on the call. So if I want maid, the closest maid to my place will go and do the work and move from the work. You can create it right on the... Right now, you could be sending a barber. Right now, I'm going to pan Zoti, tata, what a great one, the barber, tata, 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 nearest barber, oi, what a receiver message, go to number 14, chaka, chaka, there is work for you. What a dogam service. How much do you need for that? How much capital? So I was thinking also, all, all of you here, you are brilliant in maths, you are brilliant in whatever, whatever in this. You know how you bright started. He gave you his tips. You know, Elder Mkari. He, he gives this one very often that he used to look for students to teach. You remember that? And then you would walk to this one, walk to this one to teach. My time is up. Up to six. Okay, they say up to six. Okay, so I'm almost. Mm, I'm Chadim. Maneta. Maneta, you. Okay, Maneta, where have I done? I've done by Magagara. Don't do Jairo. Do you invite me? Papa, Papa, Maneta. Nay, what kind of nonsense is that? Maneta. Iwe we kuneta. Karapasi. Okay, so 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 I, I figured that when Elder Mgari was doing it, so during COVID, I was uh, helping one uh, young youth Angariku Wataita na Pata Mbeta program non Zirum Gangoya Elder Machando on Bluff You platform. So one of the youth based in South Africa, we decided to assist them to form an online school, right? And then we then looked for a number of other youths, science, who became teachers online, right? Then we would have online lectures. So you would connect it, the student, to the what? To the teacher. So no one moved from their house. The student didn't move, the teacher didn't move, they benefit. So you can now do the same thing. You can create your own app and decide to do that. Where you tell, even at Mount Pleasant Church, when I want to reform four, I reform six, 
Tinawa ano zizi sa u yaka pasa ngani kuangani piwa mensi ne chichi mensi ano kutichira yawa na wenyi wari kumbai koko mnungenda ba YouTube mo connect chicha nenga atopo right and you get paid for it and the person who owns the school you own it online you don't even need you can teach kids who are as far as anywhere my kids now have got an online teacher who is in 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 UK. And when they are online, when they go to Zena, when they go to Russia, when they go to USA, and this teacher actually teaches in two languages, Russian and English. So I'm not talking to them class. I'm not on the Mangwana and Magasimba. I go to Russia. I'm not on transfer. I'm not on Akuno. Come in the Seregoko. Right? So all these things you can actually do, and they are within your reach. They are not difficult uh, uh, to do. When you read. Uh, the the budget. There are other opportunities there. There is in on horticulture, on the on the on the gardens that the president is making. He's making thirty five thousand gardens in the thirty five thousand districts or villages in Zimbabwe. There'll be a one hectare garden that has got a solar, that's got a bowl, that goes a tank, that's got a tank stand. So if you are able to weld tank stands, imagine thirty five thousand dollars. The budget for each bowl is thirty thirty thousand US, three that times thirty five million, one o five. So that this project is worth one point zero five billion US dollars. If you are able to do tank stands, right? Just tank stands. This is how welder. Go and learn welding. Buy a welding machine and learn it, right? This is how plumbing. Practical things so that you'll be able to to offer the solutions. Mara kumbere, we are we are team boy mbere do chitra wangwane tawa. Yeah. Wangwane tawa njia zogi foot nda ramwa. Tungo imu one twenty five tova tayend. sweet. One twenty five, Oh, 
to us we have got a responsibility of stewardship for the word says and it is required of a steward that one be found faithful I pray Lord that in our vocations and in our areas of calling where you have given us an opportunity to exercise ourselves May we yearn and long for excellence. Pay adventure in my presentation. I have said things that I shouldn't. I have boasted. John said he must increase and I must decrease. In all intents and purposes, Paul said, when I came among the Corinthians, I decided to know nothing except Christ him crucified. I desire, Lord, that you may be lifted up. Forgive me and forgive us all. We desire your presence. We long for a better city whose maker and builder is God. For Abraham and Isaac and Jacob is according to the same promise. So joined in that land and if they had an occasion to go to the land they had come from, they would have gone back. But now they desire a better one. Therefore, God their Lord is not ashamed to call them their children. For he hath prepared for them a city. Prepare for us a city. We long that we may learn to be more like Christ. Now unto the people of God, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the Lord lift up his face upon you and bless you as you come in, bless as you go out. May the blessing of the Lord follow you and overtake you. May you be blessed as you come in. 
May you claim the promise that says no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. The promise is true. Though you walk in the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. God will be with you. His rod and his staff will comfort you. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And you dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Let the saints say, Amen. God bless you. Good evening, church. So uh, now it is um, 10 minutes to 6. 10 minutes to 6. So we're going to take um, a break for, for socializing and stuff like that up until quarter to 7. Up, so that's almost an hour. Uh, then from quarter to 7 to 7, uh, from between quarter to 7, I think to around 7, we should be saving our supper. Then we'll come for our evening service. So now we can go. Then alumni. Uh, can you just remain for a short while so that we we'll discuss something briefly? Then the rest of us, I think we can we can go. The pianist will play for us as we go. Mm-hmm.